Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Have you ever tried the no spend challenge yet? Well, it's kind of a viral sensation uh, all over the internets or the interwebs. Let's talk about it. So it's all about like not spending and it's all about rewarding yourself when you do not spend. And how long can you manage to not spend. Now, me being a total victim to consumer society, uh, it's really hard to not spend. But I have uh, had a, a moment, an epiphany back in 2017. Yes, my channel exists on YouTube since 2014. And I tried this uh, thing back in 2017. I said, I'm going to spend an entire year without buying anything new. An entire year. Nothing new for me meant no new clothes, like luxury, like stuff you don't need. Of course, I bought new food. I, I kept buying food and I limited buying new stuff to underwear. OK, and towels in case I needed those. Right. If in case I needed to exchange my undies and socks that, yes, that was the exception. But uh, other than that, I spent an entire year not buying anything new. I would buy pre-loved, however. It was a year of kind of sustainability for me. And I tried, but my channel was very tiny back then, so it's not like I had a huge reach. It was an interesting uh, experiment uh, to, to share with you guys and uh, with the viewers that I had back in 2017. But it wasn't really popular to not buy stuff back then, so nobody really cared. I remember uh, Rich Lux back in the day made fun of me and started saying, oh, Jacob isn't buying any new Chanel stuff. Oh, what? He's poor now. So there was like a lot of this kind of people throwing shade at me. So I was like, oh, well, well, I guess I was ahead of my times because that was many years ago. Many years after that, Greta Thunberg comes to the stage and her whole generation becomes much more aware of spending and, and climate revolution kicks in and uh, sustainability. So people are, the young kids of today are kind of not really into buying a lot of new products. People are very much so into buying pre-loved, reasonable spending, buy less, choose well, make it last, as Vivian Westwood would always say, may she rest in peace. Very, very fascinating. So today there's a, this new trend called, um, it's called a no spend challenge to help save your money. Now, many news, news anchors or news outlets are reporting about it. Here's ABC7 news reporting saying uh, that it's a viral trend. It's called a no spend challenge and it's taken off. By the way, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's a legend, just my opinion. And I'm going to I'm going to give you my five cents on what I have since 2017 to today, what I have uh, learned uh, about myself and how I can make myself buy less, which is a very interesting thing that I've come to like a like a not a conclusion, but an epiphany that I've of sorts that I've come to myself. But we're going to talk about that a little bit later on in this video. So uh, it's called the No Spend Challenge, and it's taken off. Instead of getting you to buy stuff, influencers are encouraging you to spend nothing. Some people are doing it for an entire year uh, or a month, a week, even daring each other to get through a day. And the challenge is to make a commitment to not spend any money or anything new and to stop unnecessary spending. A growing number of participants are sharing how they how they set their own rules. And so at this point, it became clear to me that this trend doesn't really have rules. You kind of do whatever works best for you. Uh, what I did find interesting, uh, find interesting is that one example was that people would have like a calendar and uh, a daily calendar. Like one of those calendars, it just has like little squares per number, right? We're not talking like calendar type of notebook where every page is a day and then you got to write dear diary, like a diary from, no, I'm, we're talking, you have your little page, your little leaflet with the full month of every day, right? And so basically you kind of reward yourself like with a stamp or with like a sticker or something. Well, sticker is again, bad for sustainability, right? So let's just say they mark with a marker green, the full day if they bought nothing that day and it's they mark it red if they bought something that day 
And we're not talking about marking in red if you have to pay your rent, if you have to pay your insurance, if you have to buy food. No, we're talking you mark it red if you end up buying a new pair of shoes, if you end up buying a new video game, a new toy, a new sweater, uh, a new bracelet, a ring, a new car, you know what I mean, even though you don't need one. So, and then they basically calculate how many of those in a month they got in green as opposed to red, and then the friends share all the, you know, uh, results of the past month, and they see, like, who won the best, you know, who managed to spend less amount of money than, than the others. And this is all good and fine. And yeah, Corey Emerson says, uh, yep, positive reinforcement. That's all good and fine. But let's be honest here. And this is my, this is the five cents that I want to add to this conversation. Um... MMM is asking me, Jacob, did you really not buy any new perfumes for a whole year? No new perfumes. I was only allowed to buy them pre-loved. Yes, I managed to spend an entire year without buying a new perfume. And I only bought a few pre-loved that year. And it was very, very thought, thought through the choices, everything. It was, a, it was a wonderful experiment, okay? It was difficult and exhausting too, but it was wonderful. So anyway, here we are. This is what, uh, what I've learned. Um, okay, follow me here, you guys. For me, now, we have to be very honest with ourselves here, okay? So you don't have to be honest with me in the chats, but please be honest to yourselves while you're thinking about what I'm saying now. Okay, here goes. When we purchase and we live in an extremely consumer-oriented society. So be honest to yourselves. How many of you have bought stuff, whether it be clothing or accessories, and then you, you come home, you've scratched that itch, right, that you had to get that product, and you're so happy you got it. You come home and you're high. You get that endorphin kick, right? But then that object, it's a luxury object. It comes in a special box, in a special bag. What do you do? You unbox it, you look at it, you go, oh, my precious. You put it back in the box, you put it in the wardrobe, somewhere in the back of the wardrobe, and you don't even know where it is the next day. But the next day, you got that craving again, and you want to buy something, a little something, something, a little something, something to treat yourself. And then you go and you buy something, else, right? And then you take it back home. And you're like, oh, look at beautiful packaging. Look at the beautiful bag. They gave me a little freebie with it. Then you unbox it for yourself. You're super excited and happy to see it. Then you put it back in its box. You wrap it up again. And you put it in the wardrobe. And you shove it in the back of the wardrobe. And you never see it again. <laughs> but then, let's add another element to this. So then you go the next day shopping again. And you go to the stores. And how are the stores built up? Think about this, guys. We never talk about this. So I think this is a really important video. <laughs> just, just saying. To help us spend less. You go to the stores and you see all of those objects that you start desiring and craving. You see them exhibited in a nice way. In a vitrine. In a little display case. There's room in the store to walk around. It's almost like a museum. We're talking in particular luxury stores, right? And they're all nicely placed on these little plexiglass, little cubelets. And there's a little tiny, you know, little little CJ costume jewelry here, a little wallet there. You know, Chanel is really good at this. Hermès is as well. Louis Vuitton. They all do the same. All these luxury brands, they all play the same shtick, you guys. They got this, those gorgeous glass cabinets, and you look inside of them, and everything is like a treasure, and you're like, oh, you want everything. And in your mind, something begins to form, and that's the idea that if you buy one of these little items, these little gems, right, you're going to take them home, and your home is going to be like that shop, that, like that cute little museum vibe. Like you're going to have that beautiful little item exhibited in your home and it's going to be so beautiful like it is in the shop. And this is where we mentally make the mistake of thinking it's going to look like that at home because when you purchase that little item that looked so cute in the glass vitrine surrounded by other beautiful objects, very minimally curated, you take it back home and you're like, oh, 
I don't have that glass vitrine. I, I don't really have that furniture. And also, most importantly, I don't have that space. <laughs> so once you take that object home, that object that looked so precious in the Chanel boutique, you take it back home and you're like, yeah, well, let me close it back in its little box and let me put it in the closet. And that's that. And then the next day you go back to the boutique and again you see the beautiful boutique, the beautiful furniture, and again you fall for it. And, and again, you buy a, an item and you think it's going to look that beautiful and curated inside of your own home. Then you come back home and no. And again, it ends up in the closet and it's just ugly at a, at a certain point because you start hoarding. Been there, done that. So guilty as charged. Until, drum roll please, I have figured something out and I call it the healing process of a shopaholic. <laughs> It, 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 it's a healing process. I was talking to my friend Aish the other day and she said, and I sent her a couple of pictures and she said, oh my God, Jacob, it's healing to even look at this. Okay. So I figured it out, you guys. At least this works for me. How to buy less. You're going to have to sacrifice a little bit of space in your house. Ah, Kev says, that's me down to a T. I'm telling you guys, thank you, Kev, for being so honest. Be honest with yourselves. Even if you don't want to be honest with me in the comments down below, Listen to what I'm telling you. I mean well. Just be honest to yourselves, okay? So, you're going to have to sacrifice a little bit of space in your, in your home, if you can. If you can. But this really works for me. Um, I freed up a corner, like half a wall, half a wall in my little, one of my extra little storage rooms. And I built up Okay, a glass vitrine. It it doesn't have to be a fancy schmancy one. It, like literally, you can go to IKEA and get one. Okay, they have some beautiful ones. I prefer getting vintage used uh, uh, furniture if you can. But IKEA will do the trick because they have some really good ones. Uh, in fact, I did get an IKEA one, even though I never get IKEA. But this was an exception. Why? Because I wanted to heal. So I got the tall. <laughs> <laughs> glass vitrine, and I got a low one next to it. Beautiful, with glass, you know, um, uh, levels in it, with a glass door, you can lock the door. And I built it up, took me a whole day to build it up, and I curated my objects that are always in a box. They're in a box, sealed off in a wardrobe. I never look at them. And I'm like, no, Jacob, you're going to take them out now. And you're going you're gonna to make it very nice and clean. And you're going to position them nicely. I even purchased little plexiglass stands, okay? If I manage to, I'm going to post a link down below to Amazon because I got them off Amazon. They're really amazing. So you can also get them if you want. And... Um, and I put my Chanel sunglasses nicely displayed, the perfumes in a separate vitrine. I had a, so I built up a vitrine for my perfumes and a vitrine for like Chanel costume jewelry and sunglasses, right? I would never mix the perfumes with the costume jewelry because the perfumes have chemicals in them that might affect the costume jewelry. Do not mix your perfumes with your other stuff, just FYI. So I built that up. And now it's like magic. I do not crave buying more stuff because, because I look, I sometimes, I kid you not, I sit down and I just look at my little vitrine, right? And I'm just looking at it and I'm hypnotized by it because it's nicely curated. The pieces are visible. They're not like stuffed in some corner of the wardrobe. And I'm just look at them and I'm like, oh, I, I'm in my own little store. And uh, and it looks so pretty. And everything is like nicely exhibited, nicely curated. Like this is my store. And I don't have to go outside to look for this. In other words, you guys, I think we were tricked by the brands not into believing that the objects that we're buying are so special. But what made us buy the objects was the furniture they were in and the space they were in. Because once I put my few objects in this glass vitrine, not all of my objects fit in there. It doesn't matter. It's a healing process, okay? To, to learn to spend less 
It's a healing process. I'm not saying go out and buy 50,000 cupboards out of glass to put all your trinkets you've been collecting for decades into them. No, you don't need to. One is enough. I bought two because I need one for my perfumes because I'm perfume obsessed and I need one for the costume jewelry because I don't want to combine the two because like I said, chemically, they don't like each other. So if you're not a perfume type, you just need that one vitrine. You, you put your costume jewelry, whatever you like to collect, you, not, you make a nice little curated moment for yourself, yeah? And be sure to have like a, to create a little opportunity for yourself to, to be able to sit in front of it and really look at it. It's so healing. I kid you not, it is so healing. And it makes me feel like uh, at peace. I, I don't get that itch to, to rush out and buy more the next day. I, I don't. So the trick, in my opinion, was in the display. So I think the brands are happy if we buy their product, we take it home, and then we shove it in the wardrobe and we don't look at it anymore. It, because then it feels like we didn't buy anything. It feels like we don't have a new object that we just spent a lot of money on because it's gone. So we, we're going to need to buy another one. And then we're going to shove that into the wardrobe as well. So it's like we never really bought it. So we need to buy more. But if what I buy, I actually display and I have it very visually, prominently displayed for myself, constantly visible, then I'm constantly reminded of this beautiful object that I have. and then. I, it's, I'm healed. I don't need to go and buy more. It, oh, so, oh my gosh, let me tell you, such a fabulous, fabulous like awareness moment for me was such an epiphany moment. It is so healing, so healing. So uh, I don't even have a, a, you know, do I have a, a nice picture that I could share of something? Maybe I have like one uh, moment I can share with you of uh, how it looks like. Um, here I photographed one of these vitrines from the top bottom. So you can see the layers. Like this is how I displayed like my perfumes, right? Okay, so this is all obviously green screen so you can't really see my, but look at this. And I just look at them and I'm happy. I'm like just so happy. <laughs> I'm at peace, you know? Like completely, I'm like, you know, oh. And I don't have to dig for my perfumes through, you know, everywhere. My perfumes are all over the place because perfumes are my friends, right? I have them next to my bed. I have them in the living room. It doesn't matter. But I have this, I have perfumes everywhere. That's not the point. The point is in this little vitrine, it's my little museum and it's healing me. I look at it and I am healed. <laughs> well, not fully healed, but it's, it helps me a lot to not feel like that urge to go out and spend more and buy more. It seriously has helped me, you guys. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, it, it's, it, it's been a process, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's been a process. So I'm working on, on kind of the display situation and blah, 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 what have you. Uh, here's one of, one of the steps of building up. Um, this is not how it looks now, but this is kind of just a, an example. Oh gosh, the, it's the it's the green screen, you guys. You can't really see, but you can see a little bit how it kind of looks when they're just like displayed. They're just looking at me, floating in midair, placed on plexiglass, you know, stands, and I'm like, oh. and I'm I'm at peace, and I I don't have that craving to keep buying more. So. If you really do want to go on this challenge of spending less, I believe you have to make a little space free in your home where you can put one of these little vitrines in there, make them cutesy, and look at them to soothe yourself, to heal. There you go. I found the plexiglass stands uh, also on Amazon. So I can put the link down below later when I post this video, you guys, uh, if I can find the link again. Thank you for your time. Let me know if this was helpful to you in any way, shape, or form, or am I completely crazy here? Because, I mean, I might be. <laughs> you never know. But uh, so, so yeah, uh, thumb up the video if you liked it. Subscribe. And until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Bye.